in Matthew chapter 10, one verse in verse number 16, the Bible says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep into the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I want to preach just a little while on the subject when you go out, be wise and harmless. It is the plan of God that every one of us Go out. This is the fueling station. This is the place. You know what revival is all about. It's about us getting everything we can stuffed down in every bit of our tanks that we might go out and splash it all over the world. This morning I got, jumped up because I knew tomorrow was going to be a busy day. I knew I was going to have a lot going on, so I eased over at Sam's. I found the cheapest. I took my gas buddy app. And I found the cheapest gas or diesel fuel around, and it was Sam's. I went to Sam's and waited in the line. When I got in the line, I took the, both, both my fuel caps off and took that nozzle in there, and I put every little drop that would go in there in there. I run it out on the ground and yeah, out in the bed just so I'd have all I could get because guess what? Come time to say goodbye tomorrow and saying, saying bye to you, I'm going to head down the road and ain't but one thing going to make me stop and that's the urge to go to the bathroom but nothing else will because guess what? I've filled up enough to go there and back. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you but that's what revival is. It is that you and I would get full enough not just to make it through tomorrow but that we might make it to the next time we hear from God. Amen. Now, that being said, the Lord has said go out I don't know about you, but it don't take me long to be around here just like it does down that place I pastor that we realize the importance of doing the very work of God. Right. That we get involved. You can look back at your mission board and you can see all the people that you support and everything they're about is about changing somebody's life with the gospel, taking the word of God and making a difference in their life. And you cannot do that enough. Right. But there's some things that Jesus said about it. He said, first of all, if you'll look, I want you to know, number one, I want you to look at the way and where you're sent. Now look what he said. He said, behold, I send you forth as sheep. You ever been around sheep? My neighbor's got some. Now he's got a sheep that looks like, they look like fuzzy goats. I'll be honest with you, I made his wife mad when I called. I called her one day and I said, your goats is up here in my yard eating my grass and I don't mind that. I just don't want them yanking it all up, especially when there's 40 of them in the front yard eating up, eating up a bit. My wife, they get to the flowers, they're probably going to make a mess. She said, I'll have you to know I don't own 40 goats. Well, I said, what are these fuzzballs in my yard? She said, they're sheep. I'm afraid that's what's wrong with a lot of people. They're sheep, but they look like goats. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Mercy. Hello yeah. Amen. to the world and everybody watch them. They don't know they're sheep. They think they're goats. There's a little bitty one there that my neighbor, I, I, I've become to love them over years. They're lost, headed to hell, both of them are, and don't know anything about God. They know a lot about politics and they lean way hard to the wrong side. But over the years I began to love that we've grew a love that is fonder than any of the people on that, hall, in that, on that road. We're outsiders. Both of, both of us are. Everybody from the bottom to the top is kin but us. It's a family place. Nobody can get in or nobody can get out. It was a miracle that I found a place to buy and a miracle he found a place to buy because they knew it had been for sale. They'd, people on that road would have bought it to keep outsiders from coming in. But he told me the other day, he said, hey, he said, I've got a little lamb I want to bring up there and show Waylon. So I went down there at his house and that little old thing ain't but about that tall little bitty tiny thing and it bounces around like a little dog and comes around to where you are. It's so harmless. 
He picked it up and he rubbed on that. He rubbed on that sheep and I just reached over there and touched that thing. And my, it was just as soft as could be. Listen, it felt so delicate. It felt so easy. It was so harmless. There wasn't a thing uh, intimidating at all about that. But now, now he's got a couple of great Danes that stand about the back of them, stand about belt high to me. I'm going to tell you what, they intimidate the snot out of me, but every time I see that lamb, you know what I think about? I ain't intimidated, not nary a bit. Now you say, listen, what is the Lord saying to us? He said, hey, we are a people that is to go out into this world, and there's a way that we're supposed to go, the way of the sheep. When you and I go out, we are to be that one that is harmless to this world. I'm here to tell you I am fundamental, independent, Bible believer to the core, but the fact of the matter is it doesn't change the Word of God. The Word of God says when we go out into the world, we're to be harmless unto them. Right, right. There's too many preachers hurting people. Too many Christians praying, bless God, if you don't believe it the way I believe it, then you're wrong. Let me tell you something, you and I all know there's only one way to heaven, but you don't have to beat it down the throat. Fact of the matter is, you can do everything you can to try to get it down the throat, and it ain't a go until God says it's time, and until they do business with the Lord. Now there's something you need to know about the way you're going. You go as sheep, but where do you go? You go as out into the sheep to the bunch of pack of wolves. Look what he said. He said, Behold, I send you forth into the midst of wolves. As sheep. As sheep into the midst of wolves. In my sleepless times, I finally turned the TV on. I said to myself, I said, I've read all I know to read, but Doug give me four books. I've done read, I've done read a third of one and half of the other one this week. I finally said, wonder if I can get some kind of, find some kind of ignorant something on TV that'll make me go to sleep. So I cut the TV on and lo and behold, some kind of National Geographic animal thing come on and I just sat there watching it. And I thought about, I, I was sitting there looking at that and here come an old, old uh, 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 lioness. She was out there walking through the field and in the midst of walking through the field a bunch of hyenas came and they attacked her. And I thought, unto God, they're going to kill her shores the world. Now little did I know that wasn't the end of the story. Here come the rest of them, but they come over there and run the rest of the, the den of lions, come and run them off. But the truth of the matter is, I want to tell you something, if the rest of them other people hadn't come out there, the rest of them lions hadn't come out there, she would have died. They'd have taken her whole. A lot of times in our lives, you and, I, you and I have no problem when we go out into this world when we are the bigger of the number. But the problem is when we're the leader of the number, the less of the least, we, it intimidates us. You and I need to understand, the Lord said, we go as sheep, but we go as sheep out into a pack of wolves. You prepared to handle the wolves? I don't know about you, when I know what's, when I know what's coming, when I know what's coming, I'm ready. Amen? When I know what's coming, I'm ready. They sometimes, I remember many years ago, I'm going to tell this on myself, you're going to laugh your head off at this one. But I was, I, me and Tanya had been laying in the, high, but in the bed, and awful this racket, I ain't never heard the beat in all my life. Woke me up, scared me to death. I didn't know what it was. I thought somebody was trying to break in the house because we'd done had that happen when we lived in America's. Biggest thump it ever was. I got up and jerked my, every bit of the clothes I had on, on or could find on. Out the door I went. I didn't grab no pistol. I said, bless God, fully on a pistol. They're going to break in my house. They're going to be full of holes. And I grabbed a shotgun. I took that old shotgun and I plumped that thing out the door. You know how you do. You've seen it on TV too many times. You walk out there and pump it real loud so they can hear it pop off, you know. So I'm walking out. I clam around. I'm cramming there, walking around the house, flashlight going everywhere, walking around just waiting. I don't know what I thought I was going to do. Walked back in the house. I said, Tanya, there ain't a blooming thing out there. She said, by the way, what are you doing out there running around in the yard looking for something? I said, somebody trying to get in. Didn't you hear that racket? She said, yeah, that's a, closet. That's a clothes rod in the closet that fell. <laughs> I said, it'd been good told me that 20 minutes ago when I was outside running around. She said, I wasn't getting no clothes on to come out there and fool your hide. <laughs> but you know what? I was ready for whatever. Amen. Yeah. But you know what I was ready for? I was ready for war. Right. I wasn't prepared as sheep. We go out in a den of wolves, God. We, you know what we do? 
we load up our pockets with I don't care I'm you know what I got my I got my King James Bible I got my sword bless God I'm going to get out there and them wolves and I'm going to whoop every one of them I'm going to cut their heads off I'm going to stab them I'm going to slaughter them let me tell you something when we go out in this world it ain't about killing people it's about helping people amen and the only way you and I hey we got to be prepared when we go out and they, you say, now preacher, how do we do that? You know why we do that? We depend on the Lord, amen? You know what? They're singing that song. It was everything I could do this, just a while ago to ask them to sing that song again. I got to listen to the words of that thing and it said something about eternally. Amen. I shall be eternally. Amen. What I got ain't just for a day. Amen. What I've got is going to last me throughout all eternity. Let me tell you something, what you've got in the Lord, how good it is in here, how sweet it is in here, how wonderful it is in here, how you enjoy it in here, if you will allow God and go out into that world this way that God told you to be. That same thing you have in here, you can have out there. Amen. That is what we do. We prepare ourselves. We are sheep going out into a den of wolves. So that is preparation, and that preparation is this, that we depend on the Lord. There is a message number three out of Genesis 39. God wouldn't let me go there. But I do need you to go home and study it. Genesis 39, you've seen the placement. You've seen the preparation. Now I want you to look at the protection. Can I ask you a question? Just let's throw this out here. Who was it that bought him out of that pit? before he got to Potiphar. Who? Who is the Ishmaelites? Descendants of Ishmael that made fun of Isaac and wanted him dead. Who was Jacob? A descendant of Isaac. Ishmael had bought Isaac and could have taken him out and destroyed every single thing that was going on, but God reached down and touched and protected him. You may think this world's powerful. You may think them wolves out there, you can't know what. Hey, preacher, there's no way I can go out there. It's impossible for me to go out there as sheep and make a difference. Nothing God said to do is impossible. Every single thing God said to do is possible. Right. Now here's the what we see the way and we see the where. It's depending on God in the midst of wolves. That midst of wolves means it's a cold, unfriendly, cruel world. I don't know about you, but we're there. Right. It is cold, it is unfriendly, and it is cruel the day we're in. Right. People used to have a respect for God's stuff. There used to be a time when the local drunk walking down the street, he would walk, take his hat off and walk on the opposite side of the house of God and get in the ditch and bow his head because he knew he wasn't right, but he respected the house of God. Now you can't get people to even do that in the house of God. Or drink, drinking's a bigger problem in the house of God than it is out of the house of God anymore. Amen. They accept it just as much in the house of God as they do out of the house of God. Saved people and lost people alike. You say, preacher, what are you saying? It is a cruel world. But God said we could do it. We must learn to depend on Him. Can you depend on it? Do you trust Him? Do you know He'll do it? Do you know He'll give you the words? Preacher, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to do this. Neither do I because every situation is different. That month and a half ago when I got the opportunity to go down and sit and have lunch with that Muslim boy he was highly educated you go to fooling with them you better be careful because they ain't dummies if they know anything about what they believe and they've been raised it's kind of like you get scared to death to talk to a Jehovah Witness huh you ever notice something about a Jehovah Witness every one of them will stand over there and just not say a word you know why? They're not permitted because they don't know enough yet. They teach them everything they can teach them so they can open their mouth. And then we just sling them out there in the house of God when we really got the real stuff and we sling them out there and expect it just to come. Spend some time teaching and applying and leaving. As I sat down with that boy, I thought, God help. 
Lord, I've spent so much time studying your word, I don't even know what a Muslim believes. I ain't got a clue. I got, ever since that day, everybody that comes by gives me a book on them. And you know how much I've read of them? I ain't read the first page yet. I was going to read the whole week I was up here, but that didn't work out. Wrong stuff. You say, preach what you said. I had to depend on God. As I sat across that table and he started asking questions, guess what God did? God opened my mouth and put some stuff out that you know what? I had forgot was even in there, but he done exactly what the Holy Ghost said he'd do. He'll bring that unto our remembrance. Now you say, preacher, what are you saying? When we go out, here's the way. There's a way and there's a, there's a way and there's a where. But now here's what I need you to understand. He said, I want you to look at the way I want you to, and I want you to know where you're going. You depend on me. Number two, you've got to live with wisdom. Ruling your life. Now when you read verse number 16, you say, be therefore wise as serpent. If you ain't careful, you'll let your mind get so caught up in a snake and how you feel about a snake that you're going to miss everything God's trying to tell you. If I was the one telling you this, you'd have a right to laugh and ignore it. But I ain't the one. God is. And you know what he said? He said, be wise as a serpent. You say, preacher, I don't know much about a serpent. Well, then guess what God wanted you to do? If I'm supposed to be as wise as one of them, I don't know about you, but that one I see out in the road run over, sometimes I think he's pretty stupid. I mean, I might get in the road, but I ain't going to get out there and lay down on wait in the, to enjoy the sunshine and wait on somebody to run over me. That ain't what he's talking about. He said, be as wise as a serpent. Now, I need you to understand. Serpents are the master of some things. They're the master of a non-dependent living. Do you know what they can do? They can live all by themselves with what they contain in their body and need nothing else. Now wait just a minute here. You say, ain't no, ain't no Bible to that then. Greater is he that's in I don't understand how all them patriarchs made it without this. Because we have a hard time making it with it. Can you imagine all the life? Can you imagine being Joseph? Doing all the things that he does, trusting God, living for God, loving God, being the man he was, and he didn't have a copy of the Word of God to carry around to get any help from. Not one time. Lord, you and I get down, we get bothered. The worst thing we do is we're supposed to do is go to the Word of God. We get something out of the Word of God. We read it. We shout. We say hallelujah. We say praise God. We'll thank God for the Word of God. And when there were people in the Word of God that lived greater faith than you and I that didn't have a copy of the Word of God. They had something inside of them. And I need you to understand, if you are going out into that world, we're to be as wise as a serpent. And a serpent is the master of not depending on nothing but what he had on the inside. Do you have enough God inside of you? Do you have enough God inside of you to go out into this world and be as what be harmless and be wise? Can you go and do you have enough God inside of your life? You say, preacher, I don't. Well then guess what? Figure it out. Amen. That's what he said. We don't expect us to get it all at once, but he does expect us to get a little each day. He's the master of a non- Dependent living. He's the master of an inner power. Can you stir up that? What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, stir up that gift that's in you. He had something inside of him that you know what? was an inner power that he was the master of being able to stir up and make it without it. We come to the house of God. We hear so many people sing such beautiful songs. We still feel the presence of God. And then we still sit there like a wooden Indian. When we're all alone, when there ain't nobody there, when it's just you, is it really just you? 
Is it really just you? Is there some kind of inner power? He said, be as wise as a serpent if we're going out. By the way, some of the greatest conversations I've ever had with people was somebody else, humanly body, was with me. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I know we go out in groups of twos and groups of threes because Jesus sent them out in groups of twos. We try to mimic everything he done just because we don't want him to bless it. And ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm here to tell you, it's amazing to me. Sometimes when we get out there, we're worried, well, did I say the right thing? Do you think I said the right thing? Should I have said it a little bit different? We spend more time talking about what we did say and didn't say than we did just saying it. But the truth of the matter is this. If you and I would be as wise the serpent and be the master of the inner power that is inside of us called the good God when we went out into this world we'd be as wise as a serpent serpents are the master of an inner power you know what else they're the master of (laughs) they're the master of the powers of their mouth they can master their mouth I ask you this question can you master your mouth you don't have to say bad things sometimes things just don't need to be said amen sometimes you shouldn't say it that way sometimes it's a good time just to shut up and let God do the working amen as the preacher was doing a while ago just to waiting on God just to letting God do it because he didn't want to say anything to mess it up that's exactly what we need to do sometimes hey sometimes in our lives we need to let God do the talking the master of the power of the mouth master of overcoming this serpent is a master of overcoming handicaps a serpent can master problems in their lives and get beyond them. I hate to say this, but there's some children of God that something went wrong in their life in church 45 years ago and they ain't got over it yet. Cannot get beyond it. Scared to death of it. Scared to death it's going to happen again. Preacher, I'm afraid to get too close. Listen, I was born and raised in the mountains of North Carolina and was around a bunch of them preachers most of my life. And they all tell you not to let the church people be your friends. Don't get too close to the people you pastor. Don't get too close to the people you pastor because they're going to hurt you. Now the truth of the matter is you and I both know whether it's a preacher or it's just a Christian, the one you put the most work in is probably going to be the one stab you in the back the quickest. But you know what? Just because I got it once don't mean that's all right. I can get it again. If I go around worried about getting hurt all the time and I got a handicap in my life and I don't never get over to how in the world can I tell somebody about a God that can do anything? Right, right. Hey Amen. If we cannot get over what's in our own life and that handicap that is waiting us down. I'm not talking about a physical handicap. Right, right. I'm a spiritual one. There's a bunch of them. I'd rather have a boatload of people with a physical because I had one with a spiritual handicap okay, that won't get over it. Amen. And the only way you're ever going to get over the only way you're ever going to get over it is develop your senses that's what, a, that's what a serpent is known for having some great senses they can develop them they can work with them he is master of giving themselves holy do you know a serpent will give everything he's got to what he's a doing you know what we're living in we're living in a society where God gets the leftovers let me illustrate you get up you start your day you go through your day and if you have time you will read your Bible if you don't you'll get it tomorrow that's a God of getting the leftovers God I'll talk to you if I get an opportunity Lord you know I was busy today but I did pray with you I did pray oh, when I prayed I blessed my food I did pray a little extra then but I just ain't had time and then we wonder why when we go out into the wolves that we not, we're not not able to act like a bunch of sheep. I don't want to act like a wolf when I'm out there because when I act like a wolf, listen, listen to me, I, am, I know spiritually he's talking about wolf being the lost. But I've seen God's people act just like them. And I've been one of them jaybirds because I wasn't where God wanted me to be. Amen. And I'd get out there in that den of wolves. I'd try to be a witness to them. And when they refused it, and by the way, here's what I love. Read a couple of verses above there. Talk about shaking the dust off. Oh, I can see that now. Bless God, you didn't want to hear the gospel anyway. 
I'm thrilled. Let the blood be on your hands, not on mine, when it are to break our hearts. When we get to that place of wiping the dust off, God, please don't make me do it. God, please don't. Please don't make me work because the Bible said when we wipe the dust off of our feet, it would be better. Sodom and Gomorrah would be better than that city would. It's what the Bible says. I don't want that to have to happen to the people that I know and that I'm trying to win to the Lord. I want to be that one that's wise enough, that knows that guess what? I want to give my all to the Lord. He's the master of giving holy. He's the master of maneuvering and not losing his identity. You know what the problem with us is when we're out with the wolves? We don't know how to move around them without being like them. Here's what's going on in churches, and you know that, and thank God. You are to shout from now that Jesus comes because it ain't happening here. Because you know what they're doing? They're trying to bring the world in. They're trying to bring the worldly atmosphere in so that the worldly people come in so that they'd be the exact same the way, way they, when they leave the way they came. I'm going to tell you something. I don't have a problem with lost people coming in. I don't have a problem with worldly people coming in. I don't care what they dress like. I don't care what they look like. I just want them to get Jesus and go out different. Amen. We worry too much about cleaning them up. Let God do the cleaning. Amen. And the only way that's going to happen is when we are the master. You know what? He's the master of survival. He can survive in a time where the wolves are and it won't matter. So many times you hear the stories of people wanting to go out and talk to somebody about Jesus. When they talk to them about Jesus, they reject them. And when they reject them, they say, what's the use? Ain't nobody wants to hear. What's the use? And ain't nobody wants to hear. wonder how many people today that you went by that if you see them, if they died, that they would die and go to hell. People are in surrounding distance of this church. We started a program two years ago in our church. Ten mile radius from where our church is located, we pay a monthly fee and we get somebody that moves in. Now listen, we got 36,000 people in the county, 32,000, 31, I don't remember, in the county. And every month we get 30 to 40 names of people with new addresses in the 10 mile radius of our church. And every single month we go to that door. And every single month we knock on that door. And you know what? A time or two we've knocked on the doors and they, last month they lived over here. But this month they live over here. And you know what we found out? We found out they're rent hoppers. We found out they dodged paying here and come over here and live. You know what that crowd needs? They need God. You know what they need? Somebody that'll love them. They need somebody not to judge them. I don't agree with that kind of living, but it wasn't for the grace of God, that'd be me. Amen. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be there. Hey, he said, go out and be as wise and let wisdom rule your life Amen. that you can survive. He's the master of being content. Wow, that's what's wrong with a lot of God's children. There's no contentment. People have a struggle with being content. He's the master of patience. You ever watch one? You ever watch one after his prey? You ever watch him how, lo how long it takes him and how slow he is? How slow he'll deal with it? You won't think he's even moving. You won't think he's going to happen. And all of a sudden he goes on the attack to get exactly what it is that he needs. God help us. You know what he waits on? He waits on the right opportunity. Whoop, 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 whoop. Hey, if we're as wise as a serpent, we will wait on the right opportunity. We won't worry about picking the apple too green. We'll wait on it to get ripe, ready to fall off the tree, and then we'll get it. The best apple you've ever eaten in your life is the one that falls and you catch it before it hits the ground. You didn't pull it, it fell. But as it fell, you caught it before it got to the ground and busted all the pieces and rotted. They're so sweet. They're just so precious. That's exactly what God's awaiting on us. He don't want us to do the picking. He just wants us to be ready there when they fall so we can catch them so that you know what? There'll be great results. How do you do that? Wise as a serpent. The master of patience. The master of self-defense. You ever seen a snake defend itself? A 
but they have been known to live through situations and defend themselves without any arms, without any legs, without any outward appearances of any kind against their prey. God's people needs to quit using this and this and let that inner power and wisdom be the one that fights their battle. Self-defense. Huh, he's the master of overcoming inner demons. I didn't say handicaps this time. I said demons. You've got one. You say, I am not a guy. I do not have a demon in me because I'm a child of God. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That fellow that whoops your tail every once in a while. Amen. That inner person that's inside of you that wallows the snot out of you. That one, listen, that one that a couple of nights ago was wallowing you wondering why you're in the position you're in. What did I do to get here? That's that inner demon that he's the master of knowing how to deal with. And you and I got something greater inside of us that ought to be able to do that. He's the master. And, mm, he's the master of reputation. Have you ever seen a snake, have you ever seen a serpent try to be anything but what he is? His reputation stands strong for him. There is no deception of what he is. If we are going out into this world, that world should know. I walked in the other night. I walked out, same little girl. I walked out carrying my suit coat, carrying my bike, my little briefcase thing, and was carrying that out the door. I don't carry that to look smart. I carry that to keep all my stuff contained where I can get it. It'd take a whole lot more than that bag to make me look smart. Walking out, she said, going to work? No, she didn't say nothing. She just said, have a good evening. I walked back in after church. So what time it was we got back that night? I walked back in. She said, you done working already? And as I was walking by, she said, you done working already? And by this time, she's right here. I said, yeah, I, and I stopped. I said, yes, ma'am, I'm done. I said, been over here at Emmanuel Baptist Church trying to preach. Oh, you have? I said, you go to church anywhere? She said, I don't. I said, you know where Emmanuel Baptist Church is? She said, I don't know. Let me see. And I pulled up the address. I didn't remember the address. I pulled up that. She said, yeah, I think I know where that is. I said, you know what? Be a good place for you to be on Sunday morning. Yeah. She said, I work every other Sunday. I said, well, go the one you don't work. Yeah. You say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying it don't take much. I may look like a businessman, but I'd rather look like a preacher any day. Yeah. Right. You know what I want to look like more than anything? A child of God. Yeah. It ain't about my love. I think you ought to look it but it's about that glow that the preacher was talking about a while ago you know what a patriarch's known by in the word of God by a glow that somebody else ain't got master of reputation the master now you may not believe this but a serpent is the master of living peaceable with men Have you ever had one chase you? Now, you go to certain parts of the world and they'll chase you. I ain't, I ain't that naive. But most of them, they don't want to bother you. They just want you to leave them alone. They have no problem living with you even though you're that. you Listen, you're their enemy. Ain't a person in here don't want to. You want to kill them just like the rest of us do. Tell this on Brother Luther. He hadn't preached a time or two at the church where I was at, and I knew he had a fear of snakes. Always had. I put them everywhere and scared him to death all his, all, I, all our marriage. And 30 years, I told I took one around to scare him. We took a fishing line, run it across the pulpit, put a rubber snake behind the speaker back there. A choir leader sat right over here with a fishing rail. That thing come off the platform just a bouncing. <laughs> One of the ladies didn't know it. She didn't. She was. She come in late and she wasn't in on the joke. She was sitting right here and she went to screaming bloody murder as that thing come by. Her screaming scared boy the Luther more than the than the snake did until the snake started getting around his feet and he started coming unglued. He stopped and carried on. 
raised Sam, throw the fit, thought it was going. I mean, we just we just dismissed and went to the house. There wasn't no need to have a church. We killed the whole, I killed the whole spirit. You say, preacher, what are you saying? Can you and I go out into this world and live peaceable with men? Can we take the gospel that will change their lives and live with peace and live peaceable with them? Are we that Christian that can do that? He's the master of reputation. He's the master of speed. He's the master of operating by their senses. He's the master of being unpredictable. He's the master of working alone. And he's the master of working with others. I don't know about you, but that's as dumb as I thought he was when I started this thing. He's the master of a whole lot more things. But here's the key. God said, and God said when we go out of this world, Dr. Ed Blue, many, many, many years ago, he's up preaching. and He made this statement. He said, oh, I know. You'll get up in the Word of God and you'll take the Word of God and you'll get up. I'm going to let God just fill me with words. He said he will. If you don't study, he'll fill you with hot air. You know what the problem with us is? We don't prepare for going out. But yet we want them to know Jesus. How many of you know them that want Jesus? I mean, do you know somebody that needs Jesus? Do you know somebody you really want to see born again? You really want to see them in heaven? What kind of preparation are you doing for yourself to be the one that shares with wisdom what God can do for them? He said it's wise. We're to let live in wisdom ruling our lives. Then he said we're to let, let us be harmless. We're to determine in our lives we're not going to hurt nobody. He said a dove, that word harmless, means uh, without a mixture of evil. Free from guile, innocent, simple. Our bless God attitude ain't simple. Our bless God attitude ain't harmless. Our, you better get you better learn to you better you better get saved you're going to go to hell comes from the pulpit not the pit not the pews out in the public ain't a thing wrong with the preacher man preaching it but you ain't got no business going out in this world teaching them that way and if you do teach them that try, tell them that you better hope God's in the middle of it because if he ain't you scarred them for life and they'll never know God harmless as a dove anybody some of you in here is old enough 1963, Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock put out a movie. You know what it was, don't you? Birds. All them people flogged by birds. I can see it now. The bird of his choice, was, I guess, was a dove. Do you know the only thing a dove can do to anybody? flap them with their wings. You ever held a dove? Now down in our house, they shoot them and eat them. I don't because I can't hit them. But if you take a dove and pull its little innocent wing out and rear our back and slap somebody right through the face with it, like hitting them with a feathered duster. You can't hurt them. When you and I go out, is that how we end up being? He said, I send you out into a bunch of wolves. But the only thing you got is something soft as the wings of a dove. A dove is basically known as the bird of peace. When you fly through your neighborhood in the name of Jesus, are you a peaceful maker? What does the Bible say? Blessed is the what? Not the hell raiser. The peacemaker. We want to stir up the flames. We want to do everything we can to push them in. But in the midst of what God said, 
He said, go out with wisdom, but be as harmless as a dove. Doves are known for that. Doves don't bite. They don't pick. They don't prod. They just simply fly as an emblem of peace. They say the simplest bird there is is a dove. And that's how Jesus sent us out into this world. Do we really prepare? Those that we see that are slipping off into hell that we know will change our lives if we will win them to God. You know what we need? We need a revival of the compassion and the care for others. Because if you want to keep life, keep winning them. The greatest thing you can do when church gets dull, start winning souls for Jesus. Because when church gets dull, you start losing your desire to go out and compel them and to go out and bring them. Luke chapter 14 said, go out and bring that crowd in. Then he said, go out and compel. We want to do the compelling, but not the bringing. But the bringing's first and then the compelling. Right, right. We need to go out to that crowd that has no ability to get in and bring them in. And then we need to compel them to come in. Amen. Listen to me. Has this been a good week for you? you have a thrill and a desire in your heart when you go out? Do you want to go out more? Do you desire to go? How long has it been since you went out? That one, let me ask you this question, that one that's going through your mind right now that you don't know if they're saved. I got a electronically book that I give the preacher. It's a free book. It's called Paid in Full. Paul Chapel wrote it. It's full of the Bible. I spoke about it two or three times. My mama, was, my mama was dying with cancer. She had peritoneal cancer. She lived 16 months. She's been gone now eight, eight, nine years. March is nine years. I'd go up and sit with her, take her to get her treatments, spend the day with her. After she'd get ready to go to bed, I'd come back home. I took her some stuff to read. I took her that little book. She knew she was saved, but she said, you got anything different to read? I'd take her a book every so often. She'd sit and read, and I took her that book. The day she died, my sisters were with her, and that little book was laying on the nightstand or whatever, table, table there beside her chair. She grabbed that book, and she said, now, girls, will not you do me a favor? If I don't see, I got an old, the oldest one of our cousins, us cousins is Roger Ray. She said, if Roger Ray don't come see me because I ain't going to get to get out and see him. I've sent word for him to come see me. He ain't come, he ain't come yet. She said, if I don't get out to see him and he don't get this book and I die before he gets this book, you promise me that one of you young'uns will put that in his hand. I talked to Mama one evening. I was working and coming home. I talked to her one evening. I was 10 minutes away from my house. We said, she left a voicemail, I left a voicemail, then we got connected. 10 minutes away from the house, the time I got home, she had walked in, sat down on the edge of the bed, had a heart attack, flipped out. They told us this, said she had drowned, that she had drowned or have a heart attack, one or the other, because of the cancer and the fluid. Doc, she said, which one's the easiest? And she said, he said, heart attack. She said, well, that's what I'll pray. She sat down on the edge of her bed. My two sisters had just left. My daddy was in, the in there in the bathroom washing his, washing his hands. Daddy said she sat down on the bed. I didn't know I was going to the floor, dear God, man. Sat down on the bed, looked over, and said, oh, Leaned back, closed her eyes in death. And at 10 minutes, I talked to her to the time I got home. Before I got home, Daddy called me and said, Son, she's gone. I said, I'll be on as quick as I can. Let me get my, my stuff together. Got all my stuff together. 
My two sisters were still there. Time we got, it wasn't about two and a half hour ride. We throwed our junk in the car and left. We got there about midnight. That book was laying there. My oldest sister grabbed a hold of that and she said, here's something I need to tell you before I forget it. My mama, your mama, my mama, Tracy's mama, this is what she prom we promised her. We promised her, Roger Ray, to get that book. I said, I'll be the one to give it to him. I'll be honored to. I took it next day. First person I went to see, I said, Roger Ray, come here. We got off by ourselves. I said, now my mama loved you beyond measure. And she promised, she made us promise that you'd get this book. And I ain't turning it loose till you read it. Till you promise me you'll read it. My mama's an honor. Nothing else but my mama's honor. Will you please read that book? This day, he's in the house of God. Right with God. Eight years later, something changed in that boy's life. On her dying deathbed, she still cared about the lost of the community. I wonder what made her happy. One time when she was dying, one time she said, God, why? In the next sentence she said, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I thank you for what I'm going through with. But the one thing she never lost through every bit of it was the care of the souls of men and women, boys and girls. If that is the key to staying happy through everything I'm going through with, bless God, then why don't I use the key? How you going out in this world? Heads bowed and eyes closed. God, thank you for the privilege to be here. Opportunity to study your word for just a minute. I pray that you'd take this. Lord, please take your people. Help us all to realize if there's going to be a stir in our lives, ever going to be a stir in our lives, and it's going to stay, and it's going to be what it needs to be, we're going to have to burn from within to go about telling people about you the right way. We have to go out into the wolves. You said it's a bunch of wolves. We're going to. We have to go out as sheep. God, we have to go out as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Help us, oh God, to go about this thing the way you did. God, to operate the way you did, to make a difference. If those people are going to come to know you, they're going to, we're going to have to do it your way. So God, help us. Help us, dear God, to do it. Now, please have your way. Please honor. Please bless. Please stir. Please do exactly what needs to be done in this service, in this invitation tonight. God, we will praise you and we will thank you in Jesus' name. Preacher, you can. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.